Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm going back to my Fidget Cube project and completing the other three sites. <laughs> Hopefully you've seen the Fidget Cube episode. If you haven't, there'll be a link in the description where you can find it and watch it. But to summarise it, in that project I made three sides of an electronics Fidget Cube. But obviously a cube has six sides, so I'm still missing three sides which are filled with blank PCBs. Now the cube so far has a sort of control side that does all the battery management uh, and powers the other boards and has a push button to turn the LEDs on and off. It has a sketching side where you can draw a little picture on an LCD side with a little joystick and a logic calculator and binary counter. Now in this version that I had in the first project the PCBs were all version 1s, but the files I uploaded were version 2s because there were a few small issues with these PCBs. Not enough that it didn't work, but just some niggles. So I made version 2 of those PCBs. So these battery connectors now are the right way round. I can just plug them straight in. The joystick is up, down, left and right like it should be and the LEDs are all in a perfect circle. So I've got these three boards to start me off. These are version 2 PCBs. So I've made all those up ready because I just wanted to check my modifications. So I've got them sorted but I still need three sides. The original project I went onto the community and asked for ideas. So I'm going to take a look back at the community and have a look at what other ideas I was given. This is the Element 14 community. If you've not been on the community before, uh, it's a really great place to come. There's loads of helpful advice on electronics and making uh, full of engineers you can ask questions you can also find all our project videos on here and if you pop over to the community to leave us messages about our projects we get notifications so it's the best place to come to chat to any of us presenters so this was a blog post i posted whilst i was doing part one asking for ideas for the next part so I'd done my the 3D designs for the three sides and the case but I was asking for ideas for these next three sides so I got some really good ideas here's one I really liked about uh, some sort of shock vibration buzzer I thought that sounds quite good that's an actual feelable sense so that one's definitely on my short list for this project. Um, I also had this one about a rolling ball maze puzzle with accelerometer and small display. I really like that. It's quite similar to the sketch, but it includes uh, movement. Uh, and I, I really like the idea of actually physically moving it. So I'm going to uh, have a go at that for the another side. So that's two. And uh, there was quite a lot of discussion about touch switches, touch sensors. Um, I really like that. And I found out the AVR that I was already using for the other sides actually has inbuilt touch um, sensing, but I've never used touch sensors. So I think it's going to be interesting. It'll be a new skill to learn how to lay them out as a PCB. Um, and how to use it in my code but I'm quite interested in that um, and then it carried on with a chat with NeoPixels so I'm thinking I'll be able to change the colour of uh, a NeoPixel or a few NeoPixels based on sliding some touch sliders they're going to be my three sides so let's first have a look at the design for those the first side I'm going to look at is a uh, vibration motor side. So this is the schematic I've designed. I've kept with the same AVR as I used on two of the previous sides. So it's all the same part to order in. 
Uh, for this one, there's quite a lot of redundant pins, but it just seemed more sensible to keep with what I've already got. Um, makes programming really easy, same harness, same setup. It's quite a fairly simple side. I've got the power coming in, uh, I'm taking it down to 3 volts for this one. I've got a button that when you press the button, that goes straight into the AVR, so I'll then be able to program it. I'm thinking I'll program it that it will time how long the button's been pressed, and then based on how long it was pressed, once you release it, I've got shake one and shake two, which is here, and I'm going to have a vibration motor. So I've just used a DC motor here, but usually a vibration motor is a really small motor, but the load on it is off balanced. So when it spins, the balance is all off and it will make a vibrating motion. So I'm going to have two on here and they're controlled, they could be controlled individually by the AVR, but I'm just going to have them both vibrating for how long you've pressed the button. So those vibration motors I've used in the design, I was trying to find a vibration motor um, and I was having trouble finding one pre-made with the um, off-balanced weight in it. But then when I was searching, I realised that quite a lot of uh, kits um, or fit toys and stuff you get actually have them built in already. So I've bought this uh, kit, which actually contains two of them exactly like I wanted. Um, and it's quite a cost effective way of actually getting hold of those two parts that aren't the most common parts. But also I've got coin cell holders and uh, coin cell batteries uh, and all sorts of other really useful parts. So I'm definitely going to be able to use them in other things. And I've got my vibration motors. So yeah, it's really worth looking at things like that for finding parts. Or quite often before I scrap stuff, I take apart old toys and things. Um, so it's worth uh, doing that just to salvage parts like this out of them. And then you can reuse them in other things. So that's my vibration motor for that. Now let's look at the next circuit. So this is the schematic for the side I'm calling balance mace. So again, I've got the same AVR. I'm doing three volts again. And really the only two connectors here, I've got a connector here to go to a three axis accelerometer and a screen. Now this seems similar to the screen I'm using on the other side. Uh, but actually, frustratingly, it's not. It's a different pitch size. It's a different connector orientation. But I'm hoping that it will be fairly similar for the programming side. But I've connected this up. So I'm planning, I'm calling it balance maze. I'm going to use the accelerometer to detect the position and move a ball around a maze on the screen. So now let's have a look at the third side. So this is my last side uh, and what will probably be my most complex side, I think. I've got the same AVR and power. I'm running it on five volts this time. And then I've got a array of nine near pixels to help fill the center of the side. These all come in from the AVR. Uh, and then the other inputs are these four arrays of three inputs red green blue and bright and then i'm using the kickad uh, touch slider creator to create the pads on the pcb let's have a look at that so here's the pcb this one's going to be four layer um, because i was having trouble fitting it all on and making sure that there's no pads directly under the touch sensitive pads touch sensor pads so I've got near pixels in the middle and then these four touch sensors with three pads each around the edge. I've never used touch sensitive pads before in a design. So I'm really hoping I've got the general idea of it right. And then on the bottom, I've got that. But again, let's have a look at the 3D. So you can see the near pixels, the sliders. And if I spin it around on the back, it looks 
fairly standard like the rest of them. So I'm going to send off these designs to be made and then I can solder them up and hopefully program them and it should all be working, fingers crossed. So I've got my boards back. These are my three new ones. I've got the vibration board, my maze, ball maze, accelerometer board and my touch uh, sensor near pixel board. I've also had all my parts arrive so we can get soldering. So I've finished soldering the boards. I've got all three of them here, but my vibration board, I've not yet attached the actual vibration motors to. So I'm just gonna do that now. So the motors have come like that. I'm gonna have to move where I put them because I forgot about leaving clearance for the connector, but that's fine. I've got plenty of room to move them slightly sideways from the circular indicator. And I put these connectors on. So I've got a couple extra of the pre-made wires. So I'm just gonna cut the end off, solder those wires to those. It can go either way around um, and then we can connect them. So now this one's done going to plug the connector in, loop the wire around and these have a little self adhesive pad on the back of them already stuck. If the ones you're using doesn't because they're slightly different or they're reused from something just use a bit of double sided sticky tape. <laughs> Stick that on. So I'm going to do the same for the other side and then we'll have two. So now I've got those vibration motors on the back of this one I can go through the writing the programs for these three boards. So let's take a look at that next. This is the program for the shake. Uh, I'm doing the initialization and then it's really just as easy as is the button pressed or not pressed. If the button's pressed, it's running both of the vibration motors high. Um, both of them are separate, so I could change that in the future and do different things, different sort of shakes, maybe one side and then the other side and swap it. But for now, it's just on and off whilst you're pressing the button. So I'm going to be using the uh, MP Lab Snap programmer again. It's just a really good uh, basic UDT, UDPI programmer that right in the end. I'm going to power up my shake board. Hold the programming header in place and program. And now it's programmed I can press it and it vibrates. Then got my uh, near pixels with the sliders. I'm setting up my near pixels. I'm using this tiny near pixel library. Uh, this is an Arduino library, so it needed a bit of tweaking to work with the MP Lab ID. I set all the near pixels to off. Setting up the touch process. Now this is uh, auto generated by the MCC. So inside the MCC builder, there's a touch module and I've set that I've got four sliders as a slider and that they've each got three positions in them. You can tune them and do different settings. It's all left as default. I've just got four with three positions on each. I'm then getting the scroll estate of each of them, zero, one, two, and three, and setting the position using that to set the red level, the green, the blue, and the near pixel brightness. 
and then at the end of each cycle it's showing that colour mix. So let's have a look at that running. I can go red, up and down, green, up and down, blue, up and down. And if I set a colour, I can then do brightness up and down. And then comes the problem. So I've got my balance maze board. I went to just test the screwdriver before I got started with the programming of it and it wouldn't seem to respond at all. For my sketch side, I use this Midas screen, OLED screen. So I got the data sheet for that and I sort of thought I'd find uh, 128 by 128 that was similar. This was 128 by 64. So I was super pleased when I found one that looked nearly identical. We can compare the two of them. They're both white on black. They're both three volts. The connections were slightly different. This should have given me an indication at this point. So I run it. I've been testing with the scope. The comms from the AVR should be driving the screen, but the screen's just not booting into life at all. But there's one slight difference. When we got to the pins on the 128 by 64, uh, got to VPP and it says OLED panel power supply generated by internal charge pump connector capacitor. It could be supplied externally. The 128 by 128 just says power supply for panel driving voltage supplied externally. There's no can be supplied externally. There's no charge pump. That means that my supply voltage for the display should be 14.5 volts. So that's not gonna work with my three volts that I've put on it. That's really quite annoying. Um, I can't find an alternative part that I could just swap in immediately that would work. So I'm carrying on with my other two sides. I'm going to leave this side out, but I'm really hoping I can find another screen that I will be able to drive um, and then I can get it all working. I'd really like to get this bull maze side working. Uh, if you know of a part that might work, please let me know. Or if you know some way I might be able to fix it, let me know. I'm wondering if I can do my own circuit to bump that voltage up. Might be the easiest, but we'll have to see. So anyway, let's continue with these two sides. I've got them programmed, so now we can assemble it. Right, so I'm starting assembling it. I could just assemble it all into the same 3D printed parts as I used last time, but I did uh, find that these aren't very robust. I did modify this one with a bit of hot glue in the end and it is keeping fairly firm and rigid. I've not had any breaks, but I'm sort of hoping I might be able to make it a bit more robust. So before I just go to using these parts, I'm going to open up FreeCAD and have a little play and see if I can make a new frame for it. So here's the case design. I've just made it all uh, thicker so it's going to be slightly bigger in all three axes. Um, it just gives a bit more material on these corners. The other thing was there was upright here that was in off that square but I've just removed them they were always getting broken off and I've changed it to make an internal frame but I'm sort of hoping I can put the PCBs in and then put the framework in there separately and because it's attached to the square at the bottom, I'm hoping it will be a bit sturdier. So I'm going to send those two uh, STLs to the 3D printer and we can have a look at how it comes out. 
So I've got my pieces printed. It's much sturdier. They don't snap. I can give it quite a good squeeze. Uh, the internal one probably would, but that's internal. Um, however, I've got one problem that if I use bare PCBs, they're all held in nicely with that internal one. I can give them quite a good squeeze and it's holding nicely. But when I designed the PCBs, I made sure I left the sides uh, with a gap on them for those little spurs that come up. But now it's a whole cube. There's bars at the bottom. Some PCBs would be fine with that. But other ones don't have the room for something to be pressed up against the bottom of them. So that's a bit of a problem. So I've gone drop back to the drawing board and just they look good. They were sturdy, but just that bottom section. So I've just printed out some sticks, I'm going to call them rods. And instead of using that frame, I think I might have to use a bit of hot glue to hold them in position. It's a bit fiddly, but I can just use these find a bit of the PCB without any components and I can just prop them across and then that holds firmly. So I'm going to use four, maybe six of these rods in different places and see how that holds. It's not the ideal solution but it will work for now. So let's get assembling it together. Here it is. I am super, super happy with this. I just really, really like it. it it's come out perfect, except for all the side that doesn't work. Um, I do need to redo the PCB for the balance made sides, but I think it should all work. If I put the uh, boost chip on there for the voltage to the screen, but everything else is super, super cool. I. I can't describe quite how much I love it. It, yeah, it's very cool. So I can turn it on the same as the old one with the slider and the button. And then I've got the color ring. The logic calculator is the same as it was previously with the counting and the sketches, exactly the same. But then, I've got my Neopixel side I super duper like, uh, so I can turn each colour red on and off, green on and off, and blue, and set my voltage and do any mixture, and the vibrate side. So overall, yeah, I am super, super happy. Let's take a closer look at it. So I really, I do really love this. Um, it's amazing. It's going to be brilliant once I fix that LCD side. Um, I will update the community page when I've come out with a new PCB design for that and tested it and I'll let you know if it all works. But yeah, I love it. Um, please come over to the Element 14 page, uh, ask me any questions, uh, let me know what you think. I'd love to know if you had a go at version 1. I'd love to know if you have a go at version 2 as well. Uh, I'd also be really interested to know if you've got any alternatives for any of the sides, anything you do differently. Um, it's great to know, it can improve future projects, etc. But for now, that's all. So bye. <laughs>